What's up, enthusiasts? Today I've got some 5 versus 5 gameplay footage for you from one of our recent test games. Now this is on a larger field than we normally play on to test out and see how it would go, so it's a little bit different, but the vast majority of the rules are the same. In fact, I'll have a link to the rules down below for you, but let's go ahead and dive right in. You may notice this middle point out here in the open is relatively unguarded. There's not much cover there to work with, and that's by design. We want the middle point to be very contested and very hard to hold to keep the action moving and the game flowing. I'm also going to go ahead and leave in when I get tagged out here and not cut anything out so you get an idea of the flow of the game and how it affects your team when you get tagged out, how much of a time sink it is, so how important it is for you to stay on the field and not get tagged out. I've been tagged out twice here in a really short amount of time and it takes a toll as the more you're out and the more your team gets overwhelmed, the more pushed back you get. Watch, watch your left, watch your left. Chris. Your left. Yeah, yeah I'm good. let's go, go, go. Coming at the cover. Taking the move back. Kyle leg or arm. Pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. They can storm you quick from there. Yeah, just take the time we can and set up positions. Now you notice I just said don't push out too far because even though you can overwhelm the other team, the way we've set up the spawn and how it all works allows for teams to reclaim their home timer and really get around those players that are trying to spawn camp them. It's something important to keep the game going. It's something we tested a lot with this particular field layout and design to help promote and prevent those kinds of issues from happening. I got one on my left. Something I see way too often is players getting stuck in behind a forward piece of cover because they don't want to relinquish that field control. But in the end, it gets them tagged out and their team is then down a player. And so being able to know when you should run back or push forward is really important in this type of game. Nice, nice, nice. Tark's coming in, be careful, it's not worth, it's not worth. Good job, good job. I thought he was gonna push in for it. Right, wide right, wide right, right, right. Kyle in. You can see we're doing a pretty good job of maintaining field control without being heavily pushed forward. That's because we're communicating and being aware of what's going on in the field and the enemy team is coming at us one by one for the most part. Tark is in wide right. How much time? Thank you. Tark moving, Tark moving. Kyle right, Kyle right. 
Kyle, right! You got you? Yeah, yeah. With the dart limitations in these game types, it really is important to scavenge. And you can actually see me here taking extra darts from mags that I may have pulled out to reload with one or two darts left and putting them into one mag for this last 30 seconds of the game to try and have something to use for the final moments of this game. Hold middle, hold middle. Nice drop! Get ready to stop timer! Flip timers! That is insanely fun. That's gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you think of this game type and competitive nerf as a whole. Is it something you'd wanna get interested in or involved in? If so, there's a link to our website down below and a Discord as well if you wanna come and talk and get to know all about the goodness that is competitive nerf and all the different game types. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.